it's not my intention to uh, criticize uh, the vast uh, majority of people who have been working and employing very successfully uh, vacuum techniques to produce the best superconductor coatings we know for the moment. But there are clear elements where for the near future we see a big advantage for the, uh, for the sol gel techniques. Vacuum clearly is a line of sight technique. It means that you deposit directly in front of you. You can go behind the corner like we do. We can go inside this uh, very complicated mesh of material if you want. You work in an inherently reducing atmosphere and you want to make oxides. So it's easier, I think, to start from a high pressure oxygen environment. You have this layer by layer or atom by atom growth, which limits the speed, I think. If you have this, sol this solvent with a lot of atoms, you can uh, grow much faster. Of course, the advantage is that there is a lot of equipment already available. There are commercial precursors which you can buy. It's fairly expensive and it requires a certain amount of technology. So chemical techniques for growth of conductors is very important, not just physical vapor deposition techniques. People are getting away from that now. But there's still a lot of room for doing new chemistries of the solutions and new ways to deposit these. So the, the chemical solution deposition techniques uh, have uh, not a very long history. have actually been started to develop as uh, precursors for uh, epitaxial growth of oxides only uh, a few years ago. And it has been a great work of the uh, organic chemistry to prepare a new precursor to make this MOCVD method. And now, if I have to decide for a method for a large array deposition, I will go directly to the MOCVD because I think because actually you need to find the right uh, metal organic precursors which can be uh, soluble, can be uh, deposited in a substrate, uh, should be not too much uh, sensible for instance to uh, effects like uh, humidity or something like this, so this is another difficulty. And, and then uh, the thickness of the layers that you are depositing in a simple spin coating or deep coating methodology uh, is actually proportional to the concentration or the viscosity of the solution. I mean, new chemical processes, I don't know, you know, new organic compounds that are not very toxic for growing coated conductors and, and delivering them by solution techniques or um, gel. The chemical processes involved in these three steps, going from the solution state to the jellified glassy state and to the thin film solid state, is in fact the first stage is a hydrolysis stage in which the metal ions will be hydrolyzed by the water uh, molecules present. What we see here is a demonstration of the synthesis of neodymium barium copperate uh, sol gel preparation. We start with uh, different metal uh, acetates, uh, dissolve them in a water solution. Then afterwards we add the complexing agent to keep the different metal ions in the solution. Therefore, we need to uh, reflux it overnight at 80 uh, degrees Celsius. So you start from metal salts, such as uh, metal nitrates or metal acetates, and you make a homogeneous and clear solution. This you can see here. After this hydrolysis, condensation reactions uh, take place, leading to metal oxide chains. So this metal oxide bond is in fact very important to control the jellified three-dimensional network and to control the final oxide state of the superconductor. In the water-based solution method, which we call the inorganic route, the first step involves the solution of metal salts in water. These metal salts can be metal nitrates or metal acetates. They have to be very soluble, that's the idea. Now, if you dissolve metal salts in water, what you obtain is a hydrolysis reaction with your water molecules. Now, based on the charge, which is here, the Z+, plus, and based on the ionic radius of the metal ion, the tendency to release protons from these water molecules will be larger. Under the so-called name of 1-3 compounds, there is a whole range of metal ions 
rare earth metal ions that can be introduced in these solutions. So every rare earth will need its own optimization to, to come to an optimized sol gel precursor method for these uh, compounds as a tin film or as a bulk material. So in this diagram, Livage's diagram, you can see that depending on the size and the um, coordination number or the charge of the metal ion, and depending on the pH of the solution, you will obtain several species in your solution. Starting from hydrolyzed species, uh, solvitated metal ions, going to hydroxide species and eventually oxide species. So this shows that it's very important to control the pH of your solution, to control the charge and the ionic radius of your metal ion, and to control the concentration of your metal ion to avoid the hydroxide uh, species in your solution. A phase diagram where metal concentration is situated along the pH of the solution, and it shows you that you can control with the control of the pH the hydrolysis and condensation reactions of your species. If the pH is too low, let's say below pH value of 2, you will end up only with hydrolyzed species. You will end up with a solution, but not with a network, not with the formation of metal oxide bonds, and not with a good metal oxide solid phase. Now, to obtain a stable gelation process, the problem is the pH. So it's very important that the metal ions are homogeneous distributed in the network. As you can see here, at pH 2, that's not the case. You see here, precipitate. So you have to be in the green area, in fact, to con with controlled oilation and oxalation rates. And in fact, we have shown that between pH 5 and 7 is the optimal position to end up with a good jellified network. When you keep the pH value at, at a value of 5, you can see that we obtain a very clear, it's a blue clear gel which means that the metal complexes now are kept in the gel network and hasn't or, or haven't been precipitated. If you go too high in pH, you will end up with hydroxide species which will precipitate in your solution. If we regulate the pH using ammonia and we go to a value of 8, when we use too much ammonia, the metal complexes will also precipitate in the gel network. In the reaction between the metal state in uh, water and the metal oxide metal bond, this is a very fast reaction. We have to slow it down. So what you do is you have to gel it first, you have to stabilize that it cannot move anymore, and then you do the reaction slowly. If you check the differential of the weight as a function of temperature, you will see a very strong peak appearing here and maybe another peak appearing there. What this means is that at this uh, moment of the temperature, there is a lot of heat being produced. And this heat generates blisters, cracks, uh, all kind of deformations which we don't want. And therefore, we add more uh, organic components with different thermal trajectories, so that in the end, instead of having the red one, we have a decomposition which is spread over a much wider area. How do we slow it down? We add this uh, organic binder. These agents allow us to make these gels, these three-dimensional structures which are stable and where the metal ions don't find themselves anymore and you have a homogeneous mixture from which you start. We want to solve the mechanism by which this cooperative growth uh, originating from these very highly concentrated media occurs because that is one which is going to allow us to uh, be much more efficient in the future in devising new chemistry.